Hi, I'm Alexandra Teague, and I'm going to be reading some poems from my new book, or what we'll call Desire, that came out last August from Persia, which I was excited to read for at Get Lit this year, uh, but I am happy to get to read instead this way. Uh, this first poem is called Sketch, Charcoal, and Body on Paper. The girls who posed for beginning drawing, insecurity slipped off their shoulders and draped over chairs knew how to turn themselves into specimens, naked and safe as feathers or bones or the amphibrax of antlers, how to suggest like that wildness and bodies in excess of the bodies we could see, their faces when I passed them later in the hall, out of place, too intimate to look at, after thoughts of neck and breasts and hips, what I feared of my skin, its proportion, perspective, the way I was always and never really posing, how I wanted that beauty that knew how not to care, let people stare, let them mismeasure, smudge pages with charcoal, erase me. Self-portrait as curious lunatic sketch of a dancing girl. And it has an epigraph that was under a drawing that was labeled curious lunatic sketch of a dancing girl uh, that said an odd conception is the extra pair of eyes in the woman's hat. And I found that in an American Weekly from 1921. Again, self-portrait as curious lunatic sketch of a dancing girl. I'll tell it again, after my mother died, I danced on her chairs in mad circles. It was only dancing because there was music in another room. I needed her kitchen to be a carousel, not flour, tablespoons, hands, but bright lacquered stallions and bridles. I was only living because someone was breathing inside my lungs. I needed extra eyes just to see her, her hands as tablespoons of ash. I lacquered myself with bright broken mirrors. I wanted the woman at Civic Center Station to be the tree she said she was. I needed more eyes to look away. When men held her back, she cried, don't cut my branches. We needed that train to hit us so we had reason to be broken. It wasn't just my mother, I was always afraid. I gave men the saw and then cried, don't cut my branches, cried, hold me together as I made self a collage. I feared both too much and too little. It wasn't just my mother, therapied back into 1962, out of phase with self once too, like a horror movie voice. I was always collaging fear with cheaply built carnivals. I climbed on the stallion, the ostrich, the funhouse mirror, out of phase as the voice in the exorcist, that corner of mechanical and human. I curled up drunk in a police car between the ostrich feather palm trees of Key West. I climbed in by choice. At the corner of mechanical and human, I kept drunkenly asking the police to call the number of the phone I was carrying. Who was I ever but a girl climbing through the choices of being human? Who was I as I slipped pills inside to slip outside myself to dance? Some nights, I was the right number on redial. When my nephew went mad, I said, if our mother weren't dead, this would kill her. He swallowed pills to slip outside the self who read Flannery O'Connor aloud in the cemetery to honor her birthday. If she weren't dead, he would have let her pet his pet rabbit. When he went mad, he spoke like a Western movie version of himself, born to gravel and the loud grit of necessity. Anne Carson writes, this is where the soul is. I was there when we buried him in a Western cemetery. I helped carry his body. It was his 26th birthday. Did he need that gun to explain why he was broken? What do any of us become when we subtract the world or add its necessities to the grit and the lacquer? I will never not carry his body. I will never not dance with these extra eyes in my hat. I'm just gonna read one more poem uh, that I've actually never read before. Uh, it's a really difficult poem for me, uh, but it's also a poem uh, with a lot of hope. And I think in this difficult and isolated time that I would like to share it. It's called Suicide Notes as M.C. Escher's Impossible Constructions. Because finally I haven't, and the knife my mother raised to chase me through the funhouse of our living room, screaming, go ahead if you're going to, cut the ordinary crescent suns of summer squash an hour later, 
with my hand on its handle, suggesting self was impossibly contiguous. If I believed in God, I would be dead by now. No, if I believed in God like a knife drawer. I used to drive to churches in Springfield, Missouri, the buckle of the Bible belt, and park outside because they were boxes someone believed opened beyond the simple laws of ceilings. Someone told me early, depression is a box, and when I'm not, I see it as that cube I was so proud to learn to draw as a child, square overlaid on square, and then those diagonals. At first, it seemed like so much space. My mother said, drawing boxes means you feel trapped. Drawing flowers means you feel lonely. A doctor had electroshocked her in the 1960s for feeling too strongly. Maybe I am alive because despair is so unoriginal. I did not question her. I was scared. I kept climbing stairs. The winter in San Francisco, I lived leaning over bridges. My almost ex-husband and my lover had rolled the suicide netting aside to make more space for a rave in the air. I wore feather boas. I imagined as nooses stayed up all night and felt each morning like a square against a square and that diagonal of the BART station stairs like a tautology because my students are waiting in the portable temporary classroom that has been there for decades. I am climbing to teach them because they believe I am climbing to teach them. They are waiting. One had just been diagnosed at nearly 50 as on the spectrum, was so relieved he kept telling me he finally understood the walls inside his mind. Another was missing a finger, an artist who looked like Diego Rivera, who I flirted with because I was the cliche of melodrama, drawing a spinal brace and nails means. I was really hurting, and if I had died then, my last words would more likely have been, paragraph organization needs work, connection to thesis, then a note saying, I can't, I can't, I tried, and a family history of, and my nephew will not in the future survive a room of a gun and himself, and will leave no note except his body. I don't believe in a God who wears a belt he takes off for the rapture or a you trespassed whooping. I am not a melodramatic person, is one of my favorite lines of poetry because it climbs up and down the staircase of its own denial. I have always been so careful to buckle the seat belt. I have spent months of my life in a box like a buckle on a belt attached to something. Love itself was a form of domination, so she made impossible constructions of desire. I read of a poet who lived and died before Escher made the print that in my teenage room's imagination had never been imagined. It was decades old already. My nephew has been dead a year. My mother has been dead more years than I was old when she used to call rise and shine like I was the sun, meaning come down the stairs. It is winter again. I am in love with my husband and the snow and a squash called delicata that sounds like it can't survive, though it cuts into perfect cubes on the board that has never been level, that rocks like a mind against its own limits, that I have to keep steadying. I am using what I will call a gravity knife even though that means something like a switchblade, and this knife isn't. Something has to explain what holds me to the earth, why I get to make this impossible soup. Thank you.